Well, our children as young as five are being treated in hospital for eating disorders, including severe anorexia. The latest statistics have been released by NHS trusts around Britain under the Freedom of Information Act. 98 young children aged between five and seven were admitted during the last three years as severe cases associated with eating disorders. Let's go live to central London. Rosie Prescott, uh, chief executive of the youth charity, the YMCA. And uh, I mean, it's the youth, it's the extreme youth of some of these people who are suffering. I mean, five years old, it seems to be happening so early, Rosie. Yes, indeed, it is shocking. And I would move that it's just the tip of the iceberg. The fact that these figures have come out, I think, is a, a real clarion call to society to say what is going wrong. On the one hand, it is very shocking. On the other hand, being the tip of the iceberg, I leave you to imagine how big the problem is of a less serious nature that we are developing for ourselves in our society today. I mean, you mean those cases that presumably, I mean, you, things have got to have come to a pretty bad situation, haven't they, if you end up in hospital. So there must be many, many others. For every one who is treated in hospital, there must be many others suffering from these conditions. I think that's absolutely right. And I think that's where, you know, we also should be putting our energies and our efforts as a society. I think for every one young person who reaches the point of extreme disaffectation and disorder such as this, there are going to be hundreds and hundreds who are suffering in their own private world. Because the, the sad nature of this, this problem is that it is quite a secretive one. You won't always know when a young person is suffering from an eating disorder or for some other body image co confidence crisis. And quite often, where girls in particular are, are more high profile in this regard because they're more able to talk to each other and perhaps the, the problem is more well known and they can support each other. With boys, it's also a burgeoning problem and it's one that we mustn't ignore. Young boys, for instance, are much more uh, exercised by the notion of muscularity. They crave that. One in ten young boys would take steroids to achieve a more muscular physique. The issue with girls is different. I think through celebrity culture, the media and, and other industries, fashion industry perhaps, uh, young girls are more keen to develop a thin body, perhaps an unrealistically thin one, that is not even achievable by the very role models or celebrities that they aim to, to, to follow. I mean, you touched on some of the pressures there. I know uh, the YMCA had done a survey on this and uh, you identified this kind of quick fix culture in our society. Mm. It's horrifying. If you think, really, that uh, the average age of, of the young people concerned in our research was 14. By that age, 50% of them have been on diets. That's one thing. But also the whole notion of uh, changing your body through, I don't know, some other kind of false means, maybe by uh, taking laxatives, for instance. One in 10 would take laxatives. Uh, one in 10 would have breast implants. If they could, in fact, for girls, that figure as higher as a third would actually do that kind of intervention to change themselves, have liposuction. And for boys, surprisingly, that figure goes to about a quarter of boys that would actually change their appearance through that type of means, which I think is an absolutely shocking indictment. What I think we need to be doing about this is, as a society, pulling together in all our various industries who are involved in the whole notion of being the body beautiful or the body unattainable. We need to pull together uh, to create an environment where there's more uh, representation in adverts, for instance, there's more uh, people of varying diverse backgrounds, so that people can build a confidence in themselves when they're young, that actually they're fine as they are, they are unique and individual, and to be you know, accepted for that on that basis. If we could have some kind of education in schools, the majority of young people that we interviewed said they would welcome body confidence messages in school and lessons in schools. And I think we would start there at quite a young age, at a very young age, and build up this notion that you're actually OK as you are. And if you live a healthy and happy life, physical activity, healthy eating, socialising, then you'll have a much better chance of being a successful ad adult in your, in your later years. Mm. Well, Rosie Prescott, thank you uh, very much indeed for your thoughts there. That's the chief executive of the, the YMCA.